I'm Dana Hogerson. When disaster strikes your home or business, tell your insurance provider you prefer the restoration company the Mountaineers call. Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. Uh, ready, <coughs> ready to get back home for certain and uh, play a game. Um, <coughs> you know, I think probably more than anything after the way that we lost that game last week and, <coughs> you know, the disappointment that was in the locker room. Uh, much, much like it was game one, uh, you know, good news, uh, guys, we get to go do it again here this weekend. So, <coughs> you know, uh, you know, the guys are disappointed. You know, they were, obviously. You know, we're three and two. A lot of people were disappointed in that. Um, you know, I think we've lost to a couple of really good teams, and I think we're a really good team. Uh, that needs to get better, and we have an opportunity to be able to focus on that and, and get better against a very, a very good Texas Tech team. You know, uh, you know but a lot of excitement on our end about being able to play at home. <clears throat> for the first time in a month, you know, it's homecoming. It truly is a homecoming when you've been gone for a month. You know, it's nice to be back home. But, uh, you know, sold out, a lot of excitement for it. Um, Stripe the stadium, as we know. Uh, you know, it, it'll, be, it'll be a good time for everybody involved. Uh, special thanks to uh, WVU Medicine and WVU Medicine Children's. <clears throat> you know, we got a great relationship with them, but they're sponsoring the game. And, uh you know, they're, they're, they're a great partner for us to have and, uh, you know, happy that they're going to be a part of it and uh, going to bring a lot of the kids over to be able to watch the game as well. So um, that, that's, that's a heck of a deal moving forward. But uh, Texas Tech is, is playing good. They're playing probably <clears throat> as good or better that, they, that we've seen since the first year that, that we played them when Cliff was there, when they played out here four years ago. And, <clears throat> and beat our tail. They were they were playing pretty good then. They were ranked and undefeated. Um, you know, playing well together. That's what I see now with their bunch. So uh, they're confident. They're playing well. They're playing hard. <clears throat> playing together better than I've seen them play. Uh, what it, you know they as we know. I mean, Cliff's offensively always been about the same. You know, has the number one. Uh, offense in the country it seems like every single year uh, still seeing that same stuff out of their offense uh, it's just they've got a defense to match it and their their special teams are playing well as as well so uh, playing really good together which is why they're four and one and had a, a real shot at uh, beating Oklahoma State at home that thing went down right down to the wire uh, or they could be sitting here at five and0 oh, uh, coming to town so we got our work cut out for us when it comes to that uh, uh, but I know our guys are going to be ready to roll. Uh, you know, like I said, the excitement of everything surrounding this game is is good, and uh, I think our guys will be ready to get out there and play. Uh, wish we could go play right now. <clears throat> uh, offensively, mentioned it. They're, you know, uh, the one thing that stands out. You know, their quarterback has really improved. Uh, just saw him briefly in a few of the games last year uh, when Mahomes was kind of nursing the shoulder or whatever he had. Uh, Sheminick went in there and played. He's a big kid that has a great arm, but uh, I see a lot of improvement, you know, fundamentally in, in how he's running the offense. Um, you know, they're, they're, they've improved up front, <coughs> you, know, uh, you know, really doing a good job with their old lineman as far as the pass protection aspect of it. But uh, the thing that's different, what they've been doing more than they have been is running the ball. You know, they got four guys back there that they're running the ball with. <clears throat> the amount of uh, times that they're handing the thing off is more than what they've been doing. Uh, you know, when you, you got uh, what their philosophy of guys sitting back there throwing it all over the place, they can still do that. And they got four wideouts that, that can go, you know, that are all, you know, very capable of being able to, to score any time that they throw them the ball. And you add that running game element to it, it's a different, different deal. So uh, still doing good on third down. They're doing a great job with uh, – with uh, ball security as well. As a team, their turnover margin is as good as anybody in the country. Uh, defensively, uh, David Gibbs, he's coming into his third year now. Uh, know this guy pretty well and, and know what they're doing pretty well. Uh, he's doing a good job of getting those guys to, to, to play. <coughs> uh, you know, they, they've been playing the same guys over the last couple of years, and they've been adding transfers over the last two years as well. Uh, sounds familiar to what we started doing about four years ago. So uh, playing hard, uh, 
you know, and they got a plan. You know, th there was a, a dial up a defense element to what they were doing over the last couple of years. They're not doing that. <clears throat> they're sound with what they're doing. They got a plan. They and they're executing it very well. I, I, I really feel like they're led with their linebackers. Dakota Allen's, uh, you know, got a unique story, but he's playing well. And Jordan Brooks was a <coughs> big time linebacker coming out of high school that played last year for him as a freshman. Those guys are everywhere. You know, they're typically always in the box. You know, they do a great job against the run, but they pressure the quarterback and go sideline to sideline as well. Um, you know, just to mention a couple of them, but they're they're playing a lot better, and it's not surprising because I know Coach Gibbs, and they're going to play hard for him, and has always done a great job of creating turnovers. So that's going to be a, a, a big thing moving forward. <coughs> and then special teams, uh, you know, they 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 it's it's kind of interesting watching them. Um, you can tell that they're paying attention to it from a schematic point of view, doing a lot of different things. Uh, you know, but their 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 punter is kind of an interesting story. The rugby deal, the Australian punter, I, you know, have nightmares thinking about the the LSU guy after mentioning that in our the press conference after last Saturday's game, from what TCU's guy did to us, <coughs> and mentioning Brad Wing and then turning on the 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 video and then Texas Tech's got one of those guys that that. Uh, uh, so he's, he kicks that thing everywhere, you know, do, does a lot of good things with it. Uh, don't know what's up with their kicker. Uh, <clears throat> had an All-American candidate coming into the year, the Hartfield kid. has I guess he's been hurt. He's, he's only played in one of the games, so they're kind of searching as far as who the other guy is going to be. They went through three or four of them. Uh, so we'll have to keep our eye on that. And, uh, you know, when you got good receivers, you probably got good returners. <clears throat> so, um, you know, the, the Batson kid back there, uh, really does a good job on the punt returns, uh, takes chances, um, then does good in the kicking game as well, the, the kickoff return game as well. So uh, just overall, it's going to be a good challenge for us, good, uh, a good test against the team that's, that's playing well, playing hard, and uh, looking forward to getting a homecoming here this Saturday at noon. Any of your players talked a lot Saturday about needing to finish drives better. Easier said than done, but... How, how do you think <clears throat> in that area? Well, we have been. Have we not? I mean, we've been getting down there and scoring touchdowns. We just didn't happen to do it in that game. Um, you know, they, they, they did. I'll go ahead and address it. Uh, they, they did a great job of pinning us inside the five. <clears throat> There's nothing you can do as a coach. If that guy makes that kick, then I don't know what you want me to do about it. I mean, you know, you want, want me to put a guy in the one and – Telling the field to punt. I mean, then you guys got to have all kinds of other, you know, critical comments towards it. So that, that, that their punter did a great job, and you know, if you know our punter needs to do a great job when he has an opportunity to do that. Uh, but the guy created four out of five long fields in the first half. <clears throat> you play against a, a really good defense, and you get backed up inside the five. I mean, that makes it that much harder. You know, so. Um, a couple of those drives in the first half stalled out. You know, the two two times we got down there, uh, we, we, we didn't finish with touchdowns. Uh, but we have been doing that. So, I mean, I don't know what you want me to change. I don't want to change anything from what we've been doing. Uh, we need to finish drives better. You know, and, and then the flip side of that, you know, TCU got down there three times and scored twice. <clears throat> you know, we, we got down there three times and scored once. In a close game, that's there's 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 a difference there. So you know, in that game, uh, <clears throat> you know, field position, you know, probably matters. Two turnovers matter, and how you finish drives matter. I mean, those things were probably the difference in winning and losing. A close game, those things matter. Dana Walt Anderson can't comment on judging the calls, but do you guys ever put together plays at the end of a week just for review? <clears throat> It's a waste of time. Uh, not saying we haven't done it. <clears throat> I used to spend four hours a week with Leach coming up with these plays and you know writing a thesis on why we're complaining about it. And you send them in, and then the next week you got five. You got to send in, and then you complain about it and spend five hours. <clears throat> and then you you know you create the list. 
the next week and there's six plays on it and then the next week there's seven and then the next week there's eight and the next week there's nine and the next where's it in I mean you're not you, you ain't changing anything so I don't spend time doing it now has there been a couple of times where you know maybe Alex has like sent in two or three of them based on the fact that he wants them you know just uh a, a rules explanation on it or something like that. Yeah, we probably have a couple of times, but <clears throat> I mean, if it if it helps teach your players what the rule is and how you can improve on it, then we're going to get some confirmation from Walt. Um, if it, would it make me feel better? No. Is it going to change the outcome of the game? No. <clears throat> so why spend that time? doing it when we can sit there and, and coach our guys and, and prepare for the next opponent. Uh, I, I, I think it's counterproductive. I've done it in the past and it's counterproductive and you know I'm not going to change the way we're doing it. Yeah, with Texas Tech trying to reestablish the running game, how much of it looks like what you did at, at Oklahoma State and how much of it is, is very <coughs> different? Uh, I don't know. I mean, there's only so many run plays you can come up with. I mean, you got 10 personnel, you got 20 personnel, you got 11 personnel. <clears throat> we have all those personnel groupings. They have all those personnel groupings. Um, the percentage of, of run plays with what the actual run play is out of those uh, personnel groups is probably a little bit different, <clears throat> you know, now than it was when I was at Oklahoma State, let alone what Texas Tech's doing right now. And you mentioned in the past that you pay attention to body language of your team and so forth. What have you noticed since the, the end of the game Saturday to now? Good. Good. I think we got good leadership with uh, <clears throat> some older guys that it means a lot to that have been around here for a while. We came in and <clears throat> I stand right here in front of the group on Sunday and kind of give them my two cents worth. And I mean, they were attentive, and we watched video and <clears throat> went downstairs and lifted weights and went outside and was bouncing around pretty good. Uh, they're they're excited about playing football. Uh, that's all you can ask for. I mean, that you know that the effort's been good. I thought we prepared for that game as hard as any group I've been around. Uh, <clears throat> you know, just the way we practiced and, and the, the, the way the meetings went, especially later in the week on Friday, the meetings and how we traveled and how they acted at the hotel. I can kind of sense sometimes disinterest and it, it was nothing but locked in, ready to go and was, couldn't be happier with the way they prepared and couldn't be happier with the effort that they played with. Um, it can get discouraging when you when that happens and you just don't get a few breaks and you don't win a game that you had a chance to win. I mean, TCU played pretty good too, and they're a good team. I and mean, they're a top five team right now, but we had an opportunity to <clears throat> to win and need to make a few corrections and improve in some specific areas to where when we're in that, it felt the same way after Virginia Tech. I said the same thing after Virginia Tech. We get in that situation again, let's improve to the point to where we can win that game. We didn't, unfortunately. <clears throat> which means that we need to con we need to practice and we need to continue to improve. Probably going to be in that situation again here moving forward this year. And when we are, hopefully we can we can finish it. <clears throat> but like we're like they're like where they're at. We got a good group of kids that like to play and going to continue to work hard and you know compete hard. And as a head guy, that's all you can ask for. And you've had. Uh pretty good success defending this, this offense of theirs over the past few years. How much of that, uh, or does any of that come from your understanding of that offense? And how much of it is, is Tony's scheme? I mean, what is this? how do those things <coughs> Well, I can't take any credit for it. You know, I mean, there's, if, I, if I did, then I could say it about 80% of the offenses out there, it seems like in the Big 12, everybody kind of runs some sort of a version of, of how it all originated. So uh, Tony's done a great job, um, you know, defending these guys. And, um, you know, our, our players, you know, whether it's scheme, it's not me, but whether it's scheme, whether it's 
<clears throat> Tony having a beat on what's going on or whether it's our our players matching up well with them. I think it's probably a combination of all of it. Um, we didn't do very good four years ago when they were here. You know, they they, they kind of got the best of us there with Davis Webb and that tight end that we couldn't cover. But uh, <clears throat> we've competed hard against them since. But not, none of that's going to carry over, I can assure you that. You know, we got to look at what they do now. <clears throat> They've done some di th some things different. They are doing some things different. Uh, they're in, they're in a much better frame of mind, so uh, we need to be ready to roll. When does it become <clears throat> critical that you get more receivers out there that are contributing other than just four? August one. So where are we at this point? If since we're really not seeing that production out there. Yeah. Can we go back to what I said August 1? How many, how, how many times do I got to continue to complain about it? I mean, depth is still an issue. It's an issue at receiver. It's an issue at O-line. <clears throat> um, I, I think we got some, some, some good backs that, for whatever reason, aren't, aren't doing what we need them to do. Um, it, 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 it was addressed after the game. It, it's, it, it needs to happen now. To answer your question, it needs to happen now. It needed to happen two months ago. <clears throat> so we're, we're going to focus on a lot of those second team guys to, you know, whether it's improve or, you know, grow up or whatever it is, whatever is preventing them from, uh, you know, helping us win, we, we're, we're addressing it right now. <clears throat> Danny, you switched up your, your punter and kickoff guy late in that game. Were you looking for something different? What was behind that? Uh, well, Bill cramped, so I don't understand it, but he did. So uh, that's why, and I was looking for, John's been hurt, John Young's been hurt, uh, and has got recently within the last week got healthy. So that was good to, you know, and I, Billy was cramping. <laughs> uh, so I said, John, get in there and punt. And uh, I liked his demeanor going in there. That was good. Um, <clears throat> I mean, Evan's been doing a really good job for us, you know, but I, you know, going into that wind, I was a little nervous about 25 back there because 25 is pretty good. We had, 25 crowd up on that first one that he got out to the 40. We had him dead to rights inside the 20, and he just stuck his toe on the ground and went. He, he, he pretty good. So I was, I was a little nervous about kicking to him with a little wind that could have hung up there just a little bit. So we were going to try to squib it and kind of keep it away from him, and that didn't work out very good. We need to perform better. <coughs> I thought Bill was, was, was pretty good. Um, you know, he's, he's hanging the ball up so high nobody can return the ball. I mean, that's very important. You know, our net's not as, not as good as it needs to be based on Billy not kicking it, what I think he can do. Like the first two was 47-48, and then he hits a 37-38 and I'm mad. <clears throat> but there's still no return, you know. So our, we're as good as anybody in the country at, at preventing – punt returns. So I'm happy with that, but you still need other guys. I mean, if Billy's going to keep cramping, I've got to get a second team guy ready to go. <clears throat> and, I'm, and I'm really happy with Evan at this point as far as just continuing to, you know, he's placing the ball pretty good. I mean, that's really helping our kickoff team a lot. Competition is always good. I don't care what position it is. So if it takes competition to an, improve performance, and we're darn sure going to do it at every position. <clears throat> Jay, thanks, Coach. Hold on. Yep. One. Um, would you be for or against or at least willing to consider letting them take a look at certain penalties on, on like, review? They can do it for targeting because they do it for other calls. It, it's it's tricky because <clears throat> right now there's a big you know uh, I mean the 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 length of the game is too long is it not 
<clears throat> yes. I mean, I think everybody would agree it's too long. <coughs> and that's, that's the problem with reviews. You know, we had this discussion with Walt in the meetings in, in, in spring, and, you know, we're like, they review, they review too much. He's like, well, there's only 2.2 reviews per game. And I was like, there's no way that's true. Because <laughs> I, I was thinking more along the lines of 10, it seems like. <laughs> you know, then th this kind of got brought up. So every time they review a, uh, a play, TV won't go to timeout because they think that's the most interesting thing in the whole game, I guess. You know, the suspense of, ooh, is it really a penalty or ooh, is it not? They, they, won't, go to, they won't go to commercial. And so they sit there and everybody's sitting there and they're waiting for, seems like upwards of five, six minutes at times. And then they make the call and then they go to commercial. So then you're sitting there for another four minutes. Well, what's wrong with every time they review a play, go to commercial? <laughs> you know, and if the ref has his answer, well, if you want suspense, then wait till the TV comes back and then let them say it. <clears throat> if you want the made for TV uh, type situation. So um, that's very frustrating to me and it frustrates the referees, but TV controls all this stuff and there's nothing we can do. Um, if you open it up to let's review pass interference calls to where we could be first and 10 on the 35 as opposed to first and 25 on the negative 25, yeah, I uh, think we should probably review it. <clears throat> and we might all be real happy right now. Um, it, but you start giving them the opportunity to do that, we're going to be there for five hours. <clears throat> 